Most people have this bias that technology can't enhance humanity, that it's depersonalizing, that it's going to detract. I actually think it's just the opposite in, in medicine because if we can outsource to machines and technology, we can restore the human bond, which has been eroding over decades. What I mean by deep medicine is really a, a, a three-part story. The first is what we call deep phenotyping, and that is a very uh, uh, intensive, comprehensive understanding of each person at every level. So that's the idea of knowing all about their biology, not just their genome and all their microbiome and all the things of these different layers of, of, the, of the person, but also their physiology through sensors, their anatomy through scans, their environment through sensors as well, and the traditional uh, data. So that's deep phenotyping. Now, no human being can process all that data because it's dynamic and it's, it's actually quite large to deal with. That's why we have deep learning. That's a, f a type of artificial intelligence which takes all these inputs and it really crystallizes, distills it all. And that gets us to deep empathy. And the deep empathy is when we have this outsourcing to machines and algorithms, we have all this data and we now can get back to the human side of, of this connection. Where deep learning works the best today is with images. And so medical images are especially uh, ideal because it turns out that radiologists miss things in more than 30% of scans that are done today. So in order to not miss these things, you can train machines to have vision better than humans. The difference here is that the radiologist can put more context in it but the machines, they're very complementary. They can pick up things that radiologists wouldn't see, like a, a nodule on a chest x-ray or uh, an abnormality on an MRI that would be missed because radiologists reading a 50 to 100 scans per day, there's many times they just don't see things. So when you bring the two together, you get the best economy. It doesn't mean we're going to eliminate the need for radiologists. It's going to make the accuracy and the speed much better. And what I project uh, is that we're going to see a time when radiologists move out of the basement in the dark and actually connect with patients because they want to see patients. They want to be able to uh, share their expertise and they don't have a vested interest about doing an operation or a procedure. They just want to report what they, what they find and communicate that. So I think we're going to see a reshaping of radiology because of this remarkable performance enhancement through AI. There's a lot of use of AI in the hospital setting uh, because when patients come in and trying to predict what's going to happen, we're not so good at that generally in medicine. So almost everything you can think of, there have been algorithms tested. Uh, one example is sepsis. So what's going to happen? Is the person have sepsis, a serious infection? Are they going to decompensate and possibly die from sepsis? We're not so great at that, uh, it turns out, by algorithms. But what we have learned is that we can use the same machine vision uh, of whether it's nurses, doctors, uh, people who are circulating in a room of a hospital uh, to see whether or not they're doing appropriate hand washing and to set off uh, a signal that no, it wasn't done and it needs to be done. So there's lots of things about patient safety with machine vision. So for example, uh, preventing falls, seeing that somebody's uh, walking is unsteady. Another great example is in the intensive care unit. Some pe people can pull out their breathing tube and now we have machine vision that can monitor that so that we don't have a nurse that has to be in the room all the time. The biggest thing that we need now is the gift of time. And how else are we going to get it rather than to have this AI support? And it's at two levels. So if you can get rid of keyboards, liberate from keyboards, reestablish face-to-face eye contact, that's a good start. It's going to happen. But also the patients now can have algorithms generating their own data, whether it's uh, their heart rhythm or their skin rash or you know, their, their uh, possible urinary tract infection. They can get that diagnosed now by an algorithm. That frees up again doctors to take care of more serious matters. And that's what is so exciting. If we grab this opportunity, which I don't know if we'll see it again for generations, if ever, 
because this technology offers that potential, but it won't happen by accident. If we're not taking on this really activism uh, to, to promote the gift of time and turning inward as the medical community, if we don't do this, we're going to see even worse squeeze than we have now. This is an opportunity that you just can't miss. Mm -hmm.